So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live show. It's recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. I've decided to have a bit of a play with my um, my Windsor and Newton, uh, sorry, my Derwent uh, graphic and our oh, graphic, I think they're called, and their graphic line of paint pe painter pens. Um, now, it, you can do beautiful watercolours with them um, if you keep them wet, uh, but I've used them in a slightly different way. And I was putting a little bit, in fact, I might clean that because what I was doing is just tapping a little bit of colour and as you can see they've dried because it was a couple of days ago so they've dried um, so they're not water based so you couldn't put them in I couldn't put them in a little book of watercolours and they, they, I mean it will come off um, but they, they're not reconstituted back into watercolours they're just kind of coming off because that's what acrylic would do uh, so they'll probably dry um, and then when they're dry they're set but you can actually play about with them quite well when they're wet. So they're used for artists on watercolour um, and they've used kind of wet on wet and the drippage and they're so vibrant because they've got like this ink concentrate colour in them. Um, so if you had a big piece of watercolour paper or a big canvas, you know, you could splash water on and and flash colour in and it, all this colour would mix and there's some wonderful videos especially on the Derwent website where they show you how artists use them um, but I, I'm going to kind of use them in a different way I want to use them in my colour book um, now I've failed twice with them because they're, a, they're very good for, for drawing um, but I tend to be a bit rough and when my hand jumps I activate it and watercolour uh, water uh, color shoots out so what I've decided to do um, is to you've got to shake them when you first start to use them now I have the full color range it's a set of 20 and I've got them in my Derwent art bag because I've just taken out my pencils so um, I've got 1 to 20 and they've all got unusual names but what I tend to do is, and you've got to be quick, so you do one and then you use all the colour because I'm a tight Yorkshire lass. So I'm not pushing down at all, I'm almost just scribbling and I've scribbled a little, I'll pop that back, back where it goes, I've scribbled a wet dot of colour. But what I'm going to do is go in there with a damp brush. Twist on a baby wipe so it's damp. Take that colour um, and because the brush is damp, It's giving me a watercolour effect so I've got that very strong in there. Now the only problem is you can't kind of fiddle around with it because the pages in colour books don't like it. If you're on a canvas you can scrub it all you want. So what you have to do is then, and I love the fact that you go back and there's none wasted. So I dunk again, I pick up some colour and then I take this colour and I move it about very quickly. Now I'll zoom in, but what I wanted to just do really quickly before I did that, and I might just actually put some water this because I'm just practicing. I suppose if you put water to it, it'll last a bit longer. Um, and you could possibly do a wash, a very pale pink. Now, if you don't rub about too much, you might get away with that. Some pages are thinner than others. clean the brush uh, but what I wanted to show you is um, I've got three sets of paintbrushes here I've got four sets sorry the first one <laughs> got a bungle sorry the first one um, is a daily round um, a daily rounder graduate liner and it's a 10-0 
and I use it because it gets into some tiny spaces it does need to be wet and it gets into some tiny spaces I'm just going to turn my light out because I think the light might be better so I always have that one and then I buy paintbrushes in sets of three so I've just recently treated myself um, to um, Artist Watercolour Sable Winsor & Newton Riggers but they are not as long as ordinary riggers um, that's just a round brush and it's not much bigger uh, so I thought I actually now look at the ends I don't look at what they're called and I don't know what they're made of um, these had quite nice handles they're shaped they're tapered um, and I buy them in numerical order but I kind of miss the number out so I've got one three and five of this because that's given me a medium a fat and a thin um, the next one I've I've actually bought these recently as well um, and these were nearly expensive these were about a fiver each these are a fiver each and these are just cheapies really these are Royal uh, Royal and Langnickel round ones and there's one uh, sorry four four six and eight but they're round with a point now sometimes they're this one would be called uh, in this professional Winsor & Newton set they do have a round with a point and so you have the chunkiness of the pen but it has a fine point and that's quite nice if you're using it in a colour book the next one which I really like in a colour book is the and these are a couple of pounds each these are the Artmaster Pearl series 11 and again I've got a two, a four and a six um, and you really don't want much but if you look at them they, they're not much fatter even though the numbers are different so again sometimes you've just got to look at the ends and not at the numbers and then this little set which I plan to take with me the tiny, well the medium one actually is the Winsor & Newton and it's the little travel pen that uh, sorry brush that you get in the little travel sets now I don't think you can get it on its own but you can get it in the little cheap watercolour sets and again if you don't want, have to have a rigger or a liner this is the next best thing but I do have a finer one um, and this is called a travel brush and you pull the end and the nib oops sorry the nib disappears and then you put the top on and when you click it together it's protected this one is another travel one and all the names have rubbed off but if you type in um, travel brushes you can get them now this particular one I think I bought at uh, Cornelius's in London this one they do they have them in Cass Art and they're about £15 so they're a bit cheaper they were originally about 25 but again when you've got that top on it it's just as good a length as the others but it has that protection of having the top on it so you could put that in with your neos or in with your pencils and you wouldn't have to worry about it um, so I'm going to pop these I might take these out because I want to play with this particular set because I haven't played with them before I don't think I need the liner but I'm going to leave that out um, now I do put mine in one of these little travel sets and I have a little water pot here which is perfect for travelling and it's as cheap as anything if you know anybody that colours their hair because it's the Natrice Creme um, and I've seen other bottles but this one obviously is leak proof and it's a really nice little pot bottle and it's perfect for water colouring or taking out with you um, so again you pull that top and my hands are not very really brilliant today so if you look at my three set you'll probably find that the little Winsor & Newton one is actually fatter than the fine one, than the, the biggest one <laughs> so they're all in reverse order so again it's good to look at that end um, and there isn't much in it in this one and this one so this set is in a set sometimes you can pick up for six to eight pounds this one you have to buy but it's very very similar very similar 
so it's nice to have a little travel set and I haven't played with them with the watercolours before so that would be quite interesting. So I'm going to take the biggest brush and I do have two pots of water. If you're doing any kind of watercolouring, not thin like I do normally, you want two pots. This has got three if you don't put it too high. You want one to wash your brush, then you want clean water to dip in to then paint. So any kind of water-based products, um, you want two. One for cleaning the brush and then one for dipping in. Now I'm not using very much at the moment so it doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to zoom in and then you can see a bit better what I'm doing. Um, so I've picked this page but I think I may change because um, I don't think, it, I think it's too small this one. So I'm just going to have a quick look on the other side but um, I've used this book for all sorts of things. Um, I've used it for pastel work, um, oil pastels, um, and I love the, oh they've got some butterflies, I might use the butterflies. I've done some, some soft work with pastels, pale colours, and I've also done some brighter things as well. I think this one at the top, this one is at the front, I think I did three. I think I've done three or four colours here. This is all oil and if you use oil pastel at both sides of your colour page it doesn't really matter. Um, that was some more poppies that I did with in, in pastel. So it's quite an, an odd book is this. It was only a couple of pounds. Um, I've seen it on Amazon for um, I think it's I think it's um, I, think, I think it's two or three pounds and it's the reason I like it is it's got a hard back to it. It's called Colour Therapy Anti-Stress Adult Colouring Book. Um, 88 pages of A of A4 amazing designs. Um, and I've seen these particular designs in other books. Um, I've seen the flower ones definitely in other ones. I'll have a go at this one I think. I kind of like the look of this one. It's something more a little bit realistic. Um, I don't know whether I don't want to be crossing all the time really in front. Sorry about the wobble. I shall try and remember if I stand on it. Lost the kitten again, he's gone over there. Um, so let's have a look at, at that flower there. So um there's a flower here so I'm going to have a play with that so I've got an old china plate because it obviously doesn't stick it's going to be cleaner because these are not water based they will like inks acrylic inks they will react with water but they are not a watercolour uh, so I want to be able to get them off the plate afterwards and I will be able to if it's got a, a shiny ceramics uh, but I didn't want to put them in anything plastic or anything because I think they'll stain. So I've got my liner as well. Um, having said that, there isn't much in the liner either. So they're all kind of small. So they're perfect for this size colour book. And the, the smallest the brush and the damp the brush, the, the, the driest you can possibly get, so barely damp, you're not going to damage your page. You can actually use this uh, not these particular ones, but you can use these brushes and this way of working in a Bible um, with uh, Dermot watercolour pencils because they're all light colours um, and it'll show through but it won't go through. So let me have a look at some colour. Um, I've got a pink there so I did put a little bit of a, a drip out so I've got a tiny bit of pink so if you're using these as they show you, and I didn't really want to do this, but I will show you. So we've got some water. Imagine that is a, a page. And these, uh, you've got to shake these. They come in sets of sixes, I think, and there's a big set of 20. This particular one is called Tom. Um, they've all got funny names. Now, as you can see that one, I haven't blobbed that one because you can see I've just used it perfectly okay 
and you can just draw a line with it. It might not work on there. But if you drop it into into water, you see you're going to get exactly what ink does. But I want to use them in a colour book uh, just to be a bit different. So I'm mixing them with a little bit of water. Now this particular, I'm just going to move this out of the way, this particular one is going to be okay. Um, so I just want some soft colour. Now that probably is a bit too soft, but if it proves that you can have something, and I shall show you, I shall show you it next to it. And what I do, oh, I'm doing it now, just scribble, just scribble. If you push down, you'll get a big fat blob and it will go absolutely everywhere and you'll have tons of it. So you want to just barely scribble. A damp brush, twist it on a baby wipe to a point and then it's going to pick up a little bit of colour but it's very strong. So you can see the difference. And I love things that give you the difference between the dark and the pale. So we'll just carry on. And really what you need to do is to photocopy something and have a play. And you can see how these react with water, how they react with different brushes. Now this is my little liner and I usually can do quite a lot with this one. I do like it a lot. Um, what I was going to try and do with this, I shall just finish this off. So this was a practice. And again, it was a couple of pounds, but it's still not a bad, it's not a bad, I think they might be, oh no, they are petals. Sometimes, and you feel, oh, that is, I think, a leaf, but I think this one's a petal. You can feel when the brush is getting dry. So I've wasted that little tiny bit there by twisting to a baby. That's what you do. You dunk in water, twist on a baby wipe. And that's going to give you the right amount of dampness so you are not going to touch, damage your page. So I've got a watercolour effect and the page is completely fine. And I love this way of working. It's very easy, it's not very messy. Um, and then you can go in and kind of put a bit, this is what I want to do, is to build up a bit of colour. Now they've kind of, it's kind of gone back into there now. So the other thing you can do is put a bit a different colour in. So this one is number four and it's called a herring. And again, this one hasn't been, I'm just going to scratch a little circle of colour. And you have to dampen your brush every time and this is a tiny brush uh, but it's going to give me some really nice effects um, and I wasn't going to do that I was going to go in that other side over there but we may as well finish this flower off so if you look at this one you might think oh that's a bit pink and that's a bit orange. Uh, you'd think Tom would be for tomato, which would be a ready red. So we can just put a bit of this in there. And as long as your brush is a little bit damp, it's going to pick up. And I can't really see what I'm doing, so you're going to be a lot neater than me. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is to put a little bit of number four with a, with a little bit of number three so I need a damp brush twist on a baby wipe and I'm going to put these two together so even though I've only got 20 colours I've technically got thousands of different variations so um, I'll do this one here. So straight away you can see 
I've got a variation in colour. And what I wanted to do was kind of maybe use this as a watercolour. So I do have a little a little lid, so I'm adding water to this. So you can use them with water, but you've got to use them before they dry. Um, I don't know if there's a terminology for that. So if I give them all a little bit of a a soft coat. Now I do have, oh, I think that actually should be green, but we'll sort that out in a minute. And then I kind of wanted to go back in with a bit, a bit of a stronger colour. So again, I'm going to have two... And these, if you use these pens in this way, I think they're going to last a long time. But you're going to have a wonderful set of inks to use in your colour books. And so again, what I might do is go back in there. And now I've got the red I want. This is almost like a cadmium red. This is the red that I wanted. So I can kind of go in there. And bring out this colour. Now these are probably yellow flowers, but I've made them red. The, the wonderfulness of. And now this is a bit bigger. That's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go with a bigger paintbrush. So it'll stay damp longer. And you couldn't use a, an ordinary watercolour brush because what that would do, it would just flood everything with colour straight away. But these will hold a little bit of colour. And then I've got back to my pail again, so I can do two things. I can go in there with some water. And there's no bits in that, it's just a pure, lovely, soft. Um, and I can look for some of the flowers and I can give them the f a first watercolour wash. Now you can do this in colour books if you don't go back there for a long time because like you know the next day unless you dry it with a hairdryer. But a couple of drops of that really really vivid colour so we've gone from this colour through here to this colour and now really soft and it, it doesn't show but it is a very soft almost peach colour but a very pale colour and the other thing is I think I've obviously coloured that in before so I'll just move down a bit to these little flowers here Uh, these this looks almost like a flesh colour. We've taken it down just to almost a flesh colour. So that's a very very pale soft colour. It's almost almost a flesh colour. And the beauty of it is that I've almost used every last scrap of colour and so I haven't wasted any and again I like that so if you wanted to do this as a watercolour in your colour book which again you know we do not have that luxury we can't really touch oh, drop the paintbrush now we can't really touch this again because it's wet so we have to let it dry and that was actually quite wet was that um, what we could do, now this is a strange phenomena because this is dried from earlier but I had put water to it and now it's gone back, it has kept it into a watercolour and we can drop some colour in it. We can't do too much because it's a colour page, it's just a thin colour page 
but we can put a little bit of colour in there. So I love the fact that we can be very, very, we can use them very strong or we can use them quite soft. And that's all I've wasted, just that little bit. Which normally if you're playing with inks, a lot's going to go down the drain. So we can now scribble another colour. So this one is almost like um, a cad, a cad orange, I would say. Um, I don't know if I shook it. And again, this is one that I haven't, oops, it's got a bit of colour coming off it. So what you can do is just, it's flooded there. So you can take the colour off. You see, it's not shiny because it had yellow. Um, so... I kind of tap it. It worked a little bit last time, but there's still quite a lot of colour on there. So what I'm going to do is put that level. Is I'm going to just colour this. I'll just go to somewhere else. What have we got? I have to be fairly quick because we're, we've got this here. So. Got to see how vibrant these colours are. Bear in mind that I'll show you in a second. Now I need just a drop of a touch of water. And I'm just going to just wipe that colour from there. Oopsie. Just keep going. I just want a touch of water. I can't see what I'm doing. So that's going to be quite wet, that. So um, use that there. So you can tell they're definitely inky because they they're very strong even though I'm just picking up a little bit of colour and it's still going as long as I've got wetness there it's going to pick up the colour I'm just going to do that last little bit and hopefully we've got a shiny end again and I haven't flooded it. It's very easy to flood them, that's what drives you insane. Um, but if you look at the, the one I've just done here and that one, these are wax pastels and this is what's just come out of the end of that little one so it doesn't take much um, but then you can water them down and so that's got a little bit of water to it so I've done exactly what I did with the other one I've just added a drip of water to it Um, so I kind of, I, I, I wanted to play with these and I'd forgotten I'd bought them and then of course mixing everything around in the studio I found all sorts of things and lost others so it was a, it was a bit of, <laughs> it was a bit of a strange phenomenon because I found, I found these and I found lots of other things um, and I lost, I lost the Neos which I thought I'd find and I haven't um, so it was kind of, now this is getting a little bit wet actually, I'm getting carried away myself. Um, but I'm not bothered with this particular book because it's my kind of experimental book. But what I wanted to do was to get really, really dark colours. 
and really pale colors and I think I've done that and again I've not wasted hardly any there's just a tiny bit on there so if I twist that now they're very strong but normally if you work with inks your whole water pot will be changed I think that was just a little bit too big was that one um, for what I really wanted to do because I want to work this kind of size so I'll go back to this one and there's a few flowers here I've done that one in the pink oh hi King Gore welcome to Bunny's Designs anybody else popping in having a play with my graphic pens from Derwent um, and I'm using them on an old plate and instead of flooding them I'm managing not to flood too many because I learnt my lesson the other day I'm just kind of scratching you've got to keep them vertical now you can draw with them like this vertical but if you push down you'll get too much ink so what I'm doing is I'm just scratching a little circle of colour um, actually I don't know if I shook it I keep forgetting you've got to shake them before you use them and I did some, some tapping and about the fourth tap you flood colour out and I didn't want to do that and that one is number seven and that one's called rain so obviously it's purple so I think I'm going to move to a smaller brush twisting to a baby pat, baby and I'm just going to take a little bit of colour off there so you can see it's very inky at the moment so this is full strength maybe I should have stuck with that other little brush so I'm having a practice to take that very strong colour so I've learnt if you mix them with a little drop of water and make a wash you can then reactivate it with more water if you just put the drop on there and leave it neat it's, it's not very forgiving, it dries um, I don't think it's an acrylic ink but it acts like an acrylic ink so you can use it with water but the minute it dries it's set and it will not move but I wanted to see what the colours were like so I'm going to have a bit of a play so I did add some water to that. I think I've got a rogue hair on that one. So again, I've still got some nice colour. Sorry about me, my own light there. Um, and again, if you look here, I've got very little left. Very little left now. So I'm going to put some water to this. And you can barely see it and I'm hoping it's going to make a very soft wash so in theory I can build up as you would with a watercolour but in a in a colour book where we don't have that luxury of saturation but if we do a coat and then come back to it or dry it very thoroughly with a hairbrush it means you probably could I've got that really gorgeous soft um, is it going to show up that colour very very soft colour and that was the pink so I took the red to that pink and the purple to a beautiful soft purple um, and I wanted to find out just how different it was and I wanted to play with these three travel brushes because it depends on what I'm going to do so I'm actually going to play with my little tiny um, Winsor & Newton one that you get in the 
you get this one in your travel sets when you buy the Winsor & Newton watercolour travel sets. So I'm going to pop that one in there and I'm going to put that one in there. So I'm going to play with, um, let's see, I've got all, all the colours. There is a green, this one's called Envy, I think, yep. So again, this is one that I haven't flooded. I've only managed to do once. You can still see the metal, but I don't think I've used this particular one yet. Again, I'm just scribbling a little bit. If you push down, it will flood out colour, which is spectacular if you're using it wet. But again, I've got a little drop of water, twist to a baby wipe. I've got a damp brush. And now I just want to kind of pick out a leaf. So we've got the the pale way to work, or we can work quite strong. Now I think I've actually covered that in pastel before, but never mind. So again, putting a drop of water, using it almost like a watercolour now. It is actually a quite a nice colour this but it's a bit pale for me so the other thing I was going to do is even though I've only got 20 colours I've got a bit of a shadow and a highlight on that one and again that's all I'm wasting just hardly any came off but what I'm going to do now is I have one called fingers and they have these strange numbers so you've got to shape these inks um, and I'm going to scribble next to the one remember if you want to keep the just take a tiny bit of colour out so of course if you work like this your colours are going to last for absolutely ever and then I'm going to put a bit more of the dark green next to it And I've got Paradise, uh, which is a blue, so I'm going to put a little bit of that here as well. Now I know that there is another blue because there was a purple blue. So again, damp brush, twist on a baby wipe. I'm going to put these two together. And I've got to be fairly quick because so once they dry, they're ruined unless I put some water to them. So now I've got a bit of a darker green now. It's not dark enough, so I'm going to put a bit of this, this, this blue. So I'm going to put some water in that one, but then I'm going to put some water in this one. And now I have a beautiful... Um, let's find a stem or something. Let me get the mite down there. So now I've just made an ordinary bright green from the greens that I already had. Sorry about the dogs. So. Uh, bungles out.
Right, so what I'm going to do now is, I did that green earlier and it's thoroughly dry. I'm just going to put a bit of this dark. And it completely changes everything. So even though I've got 20 colours, technically I've got thousands of colours if I want. Because I only put one blue to it. Um, I've got quite a lot. But what I've learned is if I put some water to it, and let's find a leaf, oh, I've got a leaf there. I've got a paler colour. Let's see what happens when we just put water to it. So if you can imagine the water colouring that I do with a damp rigger we can take each colour as far as we want so I've added some more water and we've got this one now up here just pull that out very carefully so I've added water to that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, this one's called Billy not sure why and it is a darker it's a kind of a a darker blue and again luckily I haven't I haven't got anything of that so I'm going to put that in the water and I want to mix that together and I'm using all the brush which I don't normally do so it's going to be quite strong as that so twist as much as you can out And um, that's what it was. I wanted to put a shadow down there and a shadow down that one. And then I've got quite a lot of colour here now, so I can put that there. Sorry about the light. So it's the same green, but it looks completely different. And then, so I failed abysmally with these pens as they were supposed to be used, um, but I was quite determined to use them. And if we thought that was a bit of a fake color I can always add. Now this is the one that I flooded so I shouldn't have shaken it again really because I've just put ink everywhere including over there. And on there so how strong this is. I just had a drop. I haven't even touched the bit I've scribbled and I've got a beautiful what I call a true green, a natural green. You just have to remember that you can't let them dry because technically it's an ink and it doesn't want to react with water. So I'm just going to do this one and see. Again, I've got lots of so, so many different colours. By adding all those different colours to the same green. So I'm going to add some water to it because I want it to dry but I want to be able to bring it back and I'm going to put some water with this one as well because the same thing will happen I think I can have a highlight up there now this particular book as I say I'm not really bothered about but if you wanted It's supposed to be really good for being expressive and abstract. But I've still got quite a nice green. And when it's got water to it, it will actually reconstitute. But if you just put a little a little drop, 
and try be a tight Yorkshire lass like me, it dries and you can't reconstitute it back. It just it just won't do it. Oops, I don't know what I'm colouring in now and what I'm not. And I've lost my little pot. Um, but there's some really, really nice rice colours here. Uh, and I was thinking about buying some inks and I kept looking and thinking, well, I'm buying more things and have I got enough? And then I, I remembered these were inks. I got I got from a water a water brush looking at Amazon and looking at things. I got from a water brush, um, a water paint brush and a water marker and the paint pens and I then got onto inks and then I was looking for inks um, and I thought oh I'll buy inks and there's an ink brush and then I realised I had these and I still got the consistency and the vibrancy of inks but I've got the versatility of having real stronger colours. You just have to remember that they're not really designed for this but we can use them for this, that's quite nice. So I'm going to let that dry and see if we can bring it back. So I'm going to clean my little brush and again my baby wipe, that's what it looks like. So again tight Yorkshire lass. Um, I'm going to swap brushes because it's driving me insane now. Um, I think I'm going to have a go with my sable. I don't want to be mixing sable too much with the inks. Um, so let's find... I've done, I did a very pale on there, so let's just move about a bit more. Sorry guys, I'll just move up there a bit. Um, we've got this little bit here. Can we see that? But um, let's have a look at the colours. I think I might want to mix a green. So I've got this one, and this is the one I flooded. This is eight. This is brilliant. Um, so I'm just going to scratch. And you've got to keep them upright so you can draw with them and get fine lines. Sorry guys, I thought, hubby was, uh, I thought the girls were coming back in. So I've got like a cornflower blue. Very soft that one, really soft. So I might do a bit of an experiment on that one. And cover that one completely. I don't know if that'll show up because it's a very soft blue. and put a little bit next to it. And just mix that a little bit, but it's a lot stronger. So we'll go in with, maybe it was too strong that. Now we've got kind of an in-betweeny colour. Oh, that's our little 
gentleman. Uh, should you be doing that with the sofa? Bungle. Bungs. Puss. Puss, puss, puss. Can you not do that, please? Thank you. So I'm not sure if I want to do this when I'm away, and that's what I was planning on. Um, but I'm quite pleased that I can use them in this really nice way because I did fail abysmally with them when I first tried to use them because I was a bit too heavy handed and if you are they will flood and I think that's what puts people off but colour wise um, they're quite spectacular It's feeding time at the zoo again. And beautiful soft colours. And it's all from that same extremely vivid colour. Which, if I draw next to this, you can see it in real life. That's the colour that I've been playing with. So the other way to do it is to just have a, a damp brush and go in there and push it about a bit. You've got to be a little bit careful doing that with this, with an ordinary colour book. And this is probably how you use it on watercolour paper. Um, oh, I've just had a thought. I know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> uh, the, the Linda Ravenscroft um, fairy watercolour book that would do well. Um, so we can get some really nice colours from deep colours and, and I kind of like that. I like things that you can have the full on colour if you want but if you don't want you can actually have a nice soft colour. Um, and again I like the fact that What's this one called? This one is called, it's number five, it's called Blood and for obvious reasons. Uh, somebody was obviously on something when they named these because they're all kind of wacky. But again, in theory, we're going to have a very strong rose colour. Um, can't actually find a rose, but let's see if I can find something. i to be a bit careful, I don't... knock everything off and again I've got to be a bit quick because it's in its ink stage it doesn't have a lot of water to it you can tell it's not happy so add water to it and we have some nice pink now again touch this straight away it's not moving at all all you're going to do is rub a hole in your page so it's definitely set unless you add water to it um, now what I'm using is that tiny bit of red left with the blue and I've got a purple. I've got a really nice purple now. But a very soft purple. You probably call it a dirty pink. Like a dusty pink. A dusty rose. Quite a nice colour. And that's by mixing this blue with that red. So let's try that with a bit stronger colour. I don't know if anybody else has got these, but I just thought, so again, we're going to go here, I may as well go, and you can see now what happens, you're supposed to put them in wet water, and they whoosh, they go like that, because it's an ink, and I'm going to put a bit of blood with that, bungle, uh, Come here, there's a pot of water there, come here. What's this? What's this? It's trouble now. So I'm just going to have a bit of a play down here. So this is almost like a carmine, it's like a dirty, a dirty dark pink this one, this is quite nice. So even though, as I say, there's only 20 colours, technically I would think there's thousands. I can't work out 
how many you get from that but really pretty colours and all I did was mix a little bit of that red and purple together now we can take that to the green and see if we can reconstitute it so because it's you see it doesn't like it it's only just going a bit once it's dried even on a ceramic plate you've got it but what you do have is a gorgeous grungy green because remember purple has got red in it and red and green are complementary colours so even if you put purple to green it will dull it down and again not much wasted so happy girl and my water pot looks clean I'll show it at the end so I've wasted a little bit there um, but what I would probably do is start on one colour oops and I didn't put the lid on that and it's flooded a bit so I'm gonna I've got a damp brush don't let him in because Bong's in no don't let him in because Bong is in can you get him out please can you get it out because it hurts it? Get down, get down. Right, I'm live and can you get the dog yes, quickly, please? All of them because they'll hurt them. I can't let the cat. I've got you, Uncle. Girls, emergency! I've got you, I've got you, nobody's not going to get you. Shush! Come on. Oh! He's coming! I've got you, Bungle. I've got you. I've got you. Oh, you slipped. Right, and you can go out as well next time. Come on, out. Out. Can you get us drunk, please, as well? Can you? He's behind you. Go on. Go on. No, go on. Honestly. Is the recording wasted? I know, Bungle. You're all right now. Please bolt the door. I don't want another drink. Can you shut it properly, please? It's not shut. Bungle! Oh, Alfie bit Bungle's tail. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alfie bit Bungle's tail. It's a good job it's fluffy. Sorry, I've got a mad cat in my hand. Are you okay, darling? Oh, Bungles. You're right. It's just a heart's going. Let me just put that down. I've got pen, brush, and everything. Right, you go up there and settle down. That's it. You sit up there. Good boy. You're all right. You're all right. Stay there. Stay there. No. Nope. Just knock everything off. That's the microphone. Thank you. Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. Oh. Why hubby has to come in, I don't know. No, that's the wire and that's the table. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad it's not wet, missus. I'm glad it's not wet. Is it supposed to be wet? Thank you. Oh, gosh. The only thing I didn't have out the way was the tail. But Bungle is so gentle, the other cats would have scratched me to get away. And he never touched me, he just... He just let me pick him up. The others would have gone absolutely potty. But Alf is such a bad boy. He doesn't pick on any of the others because they'd whop his face, but Bungle's not learnt to, to fight back yet. So the other way that I use these pens is a damp brush and just touch the end. Now you wouldn't really use it over your work because you'd, you'd flick, so it probably wouldn't be the best. So. And again, once you've gone over something once, it's probably not a good idea because this is this is a page. I know, but you can't go in there because you clean the bunnies out. <laughs> oh dear, it's a madhouse. So we've got that. So now I've managed to clean. Now what I do if it floods, I don't think this is the right thing to do, I just tap it just a couple of times until you can't see a bubble up there. 
um, and then hopefully that's okay. So, clean the brush. So I've not used that brush before in that way, but they're really nice to hold, these have to say, they're nice to hold. So I'll, I'll pan out a little bit. I've been messing about for, let me just see. Oh, <laughs> I'll zoom out and you can see the practice. It's only a practice, but you can see all the different colors that I've been playing about with. Some are quite bright, but some are very pale. Um, so really impressed with that and the fact that you've got you know you would need um, I probably would take a little plastic um, I wouldn't take a plate with me I'd take a little I mean there is a little bit of wastage there I don't think it'll come back because you can see it's not coming back very well because it's an acrylic so it's dried now that would make a good puddle with that it would make a good puddle color um if you left that overnight like i did the other one it won't come off i was playing with little drops in there there's some few little drops i made a lot of the yellow one and the yellow one will not come back because that's dried that is not going to come back at all so it's definitely when it's dried that's it I mean I can rub it off I think hopefully yeah you can rub it off like you could an acrylic but it's just like any other ink it's not it's water-based when it's wet but once it's dried that's it um, but I bought these and there were quite a lot of money I think they're about 60 pounds now, as I say, if you're playing a watercolour or other things, I think they'd be okay. Um, and it's just a practice. There's a bit of pastel on there, so if I hold it like that. What are you doing, Bungle? He's coming back for some reason. <laughs> He's hiding. If I hold them like that, I think you can see there are some nice colours in there very soft colours and that's what I wanted to do I wanted to see if I can get some nice effects I love the purple one down there I do like the purple one I'm not sure I can see with the light so um, let's have a look we've got two yellows we've got an orange we've got two reds a pink a purple um, a purple blue, a cold blue, um, a turquoise green, they call it Billy. Um, I think that must be in the wrong place. Oh no, then there's Paradise, so that's another blue, a, a mint colour, um, there's an, a pale ol olive, and then there's a, a, a green. There's a brick lane, which is a red brick. There's a jungle, which is like a, a fawn colour. Um, what's that one called? Then we've got graphite, which is like a, a grey. Then we have magic, obviously black. Snow, which is white. And fox, that's a silver. Um, so it's quite a good set if you look at it like that. Now, as I say, I think mine may have... Because I haven't used them they may have dried out quite a lot um, so I intend to use them I think I used them when I first got them uh, but I flooded one and it annoyed me so I haven't played with them since um, so I thought I'd use them as an ink to use um, in a colour book so that's um, just, a, just a, a kind of practice and it's uh, not the traditional way to use them um, but you can do if you're careful you can use them as a watercolor in your color book and get some very strong get some very strong colors so thanks for watching <laughs>